Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take another look at the use of for loops in MATLAB. And specifically, we are going to focus on using numeric vectors or 1D arrays to drive the for loop. In other words, to control how many times the for loop runs. This video assumes that you've watched the earlier video on how to set up a for loop, a little bit of the syntax of for loops and a couple of examples how to use them. And we're going to capitalize on one of those examples. And specifically, we are going to use the example where I set up a vector of values from 1 to 10 with increment of 1 to populate then the radii, if you would. And then we would pull out the radius from this 1 by 10 vector one at a time. And we would simply calculate the area and we would display both the radius and the area. And real quick, what we can do is we can simply highlight and run this so that you can get a quick reminder of what we did. Now, in the last video, we simply displayed it to the console. In other words, we had no state. We didn't keep the results of the area calculation. Basically, the area variable was overwritten every time. And you can see up here in the workspace that, in fact, only the last value remains. Instead, what we'd like to do in this video is we'd like to focus on how we can actually capture and store all of the values, not just the last value. And to appreciate what we're doing, we're actually going to do it first with vectors, no for loops, and then we're going to see how to do the exact same operation with for loops. And so to begin with, what I want to do is I want to build the same vector, and I'm going to assign it to a radii variable that we did in the earlier example. In other words, I want to go from 1 up to 10 in increments of 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable called areas, and I'm simply going to use the radii variable to calculate all of the areas at once. And so if you remember, the formula is going to be pi times then the, in this case, the radii squared. And initially, you would probably think that should be satisfactory, right? But remember that whenever you are dealing with vectors, and particularly when you're taking vectors to a power, you need to use the dot caret notation. And in this case, then what happens, and I'm going to go ahead and intentionally leave off the semicolon. I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and leave the semicolon off of the radii as well. What you see here is that I've created a vector of radii from 1 to 10, and then I've done the same operation on all of the individual values, essentially element by element or element wise. And as a matter of fact, let's take just a second to go ahead and put a little note in here that this is an again an element wise operation. If you're not comfortable with your understanding of this, I highly encourage you to go back and take a look at some of the vectors videos. Now we understand what we're trying to do. In other words, we want to ultimately populate the areas vector. And you could see here that just a quick reminder that we can actually access the individual elements of the areas vector by simply specifying the index. So as you can see here, I'm doing areas parentheses one, areas parentheses two. Then that just simply gets the corresponding values in those positions. As a matter of fact, we can just go ahead and pull this up here and you can see that there is my 3.1416 and there is my 12.5664 and so on. Now, remember that the whole goal of this video is not to do this with vectors directly, but to use for loops driven by vectors, which brings us back now to how are we going to calculate each of those areas individually and then ultimately store them in the areas variable? The first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and clear or reinitialize our areas vector, and we're just going to set it equal to an empty set of square braces. Alternatively, you can also do something like clear and then specify a specific variable. But again, there are multiple ways to go about doing things sometimes in MATLAB, as long as we start off with an empty areas vector. We are, however, not going to reset the radii because ultimately that's what we want to use. And we are actually going to use it in a similar fashion to what we did 
in the first example from the earlier video. However, instead of hard coding these values in here, I'm actually just going to go ahead and leverage that radii variable. So I'm gonna copy it down here just for the purposes of keeping all of our examples close together. But technically speaking, we could use the first radii variable. Now, what we'll do here is we'll have for radius equal to radii, and then n, and in the beginning, that syntax should probably really bother you. But remember that this radii variable is a vector of values. And so if you want to think of it this way, is you're simply grabbing each value out of your vector of values. And that was the reason I made the comment in the earlier video that this syntax in MATLAB in the documentation is going to perhaps seem a little confusing because it is implying that it is an index. But rather, you want to think of this radius variable as being a holding a, a value or every value for each iteration of the loop. So one way to word this is for each radius in the radii vector. Now what we want to do is we want to once again calculate the area, and we're going to do this as a multi-step process, and we're going to again just simply calculate using pi, and then we can go ahead and use an extra set of parentheses. This time around, what we're going to do is we're going to use the singular radius again. Notice that I do not have to use the dot caret notation because I am calculating a single radius at a time. And then ultimately what I want to do is I want to store that in the areas variable. In other words, I want to create that areas vector. Now, your first thought might be to do something like this. In other words, we say areas, parentheses, radii, equal to area, and that technically would work in this particular example. It would work only because of the fact that we are using values that can be feasible values for an index. In other words, we could start off with one, we could go to two, up to 10. But as soon as I use different values for the radii, in other words, let's just say that I want to calculate all of the values starting from one up to 10, but I want to use an increment of 0.1. In other words, I basically want to calculate more individual areas. Then I would be attempting to use a decimal value for an index. And so this approach will not work. And so let's put a little note here, will not work which brings us to then a couple of options. The first option is that we simply manually track how many times we have ran this for loop. Well, that gets to be a little cumbersome, but it's not a bad solution. So what we'll do is we'll start off with this one and you'll actually see the same approach when we're using while loops. And that is that we simply keep track of it by starting off with an index value, and we set the index value, in this case, equal to zero to start off with. And then every time we calculate the area, the individual area, we simply say index equal to index plus one. And then we populate the areas using this index and we use the singular value of the area. And so basically what's happening here is we are incrementing the index for each iteration of the for loop. And then we are simply populating the appropriate point or the appropriate cell or the appropriate element in the areas vector. And so here, we're going to make a little note here. We are populating the appropriate element in the area's vector. Now, to appreciate what's going on, we're sort of going to have to do this manually. Um, if we had had this in a separate standalone script, we could have just ran it and then debug it. But we would want to do that and in a later video. And so for now, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do this manually or watch what happens here manually by simply inserting another 
display. And much like in the earlier example, where we had not only the radius, the area, but this time around, I also want to keep track of the index. And so we're going to start off here with a display of our S print F. Again, I keep forgetting to include that. And then we have our percent D, which is going to be for an integer. If you are not yet comfortable with using the S print F, we'll encourage you to go back and look at the other videos associated with that. But we're going to go ahead and populate now the radius. We're going to use the same place holder format that we did before, the same format spec of percent 0.4F. And then lastly, then the area equal to, and again, we're going to use the percent 0.4F. Now for that first value, we're going to, of course, just use the index. For that second value, then of course, we can use the radius. And then for that third value, we've got a couple of options. We could use the area variable itself, or what we can do is we can use that areas variable, the vector, to really show that we have populated the areas vector at that given location. In other words, using the same index that we are trying to increment. Again, we're gonna get this warning of using the display in the S printf, but that's no big deal. And assuming that we don't have any typos or any mismatched parentheses, which we're real quick gonna check, it seems like I am in fact possibly missing one. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to highlight this block of code and I'm gonna run it. And you should see now that for each iteration of this loop, I am getting a calculation not only for the index, the radius, but also the area. And more importantly, if you take a look now up here in the workspace, if you were to look at the area variable singular, you notice that it still only has the last value, but we now have a radii vector, which has all of the radii, and then also the areas plural now has all of the values stored in the areas vector. Again, you can see we've accomplished the same thing that we did using the vector notation from earlier, but now the difference is that we have done it with a for loop. Now, occasionally you'll be able to do it both ways, but sometimes you will encounter situations, particularly when you have any sort of user input or any sort of logic that you have to employ uh, basically, if a different calculation based on a certain condition happens, something along those lines that you will not be able to do it exclusively with the vector notation without possibly getting very, very confusing. Now, to emphasize how we have a little more flexibility here, what I'd like to do is I'd simply like to change the increment here, and we're going to end up with many, many, many more radii. As a matter of fact, if we highlight and run this, you'll see that you now have a lot more radii you actually have a one by 91 double as opposed to what we had before. And more importantly, then when you run this, if we highlight all of this and we right click and evaluate the selection. You'll see that now our for loop runs 91 times and we are calculating the radii as well as the areas for each of the given radii. So hopefully you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you for watching.